Hey everybody, welcome to this video on SNMP V3. SNMP V3 might seem confusing at first, but there's only one thing you really need to understand in order to use V3 to monitor. That one thing is security levels. And once you understand security levels, SNMP V3 monitoring instantly becomes simple. Ready? Here we go. Let's start by pointing out that the promised benefit of using SNMP V3 is increased security. SNMP versions 1 and 2C are easier to use and understand, but they're not secure because they use only one piece of authentication information to access devices, and that one piece of authentication information is sent in plain text across the network. It is trivial for an attacker who can intercept the packets to read the packets and access devices. SNMP v3 offers greater security through both stronger authentication and the addition of message encryption. But here's what you absolutely have to know. Just because you can use better authentication and add encryption in v3, you're not actually required to. In fact, there is a way to use SNMP v3 that is effectively no more secure than versions 1 and 2C. How can this be? It all comes down to security level. There are three security levels in SNMP v3. No auth, no priv, auth, no priv, and AuthPriv. There is no default security level for SNMP v3. The security level must be configured on the monitor device on a per username basis. On any particular device, such as a switch, different users could be set to different security levels. If you're setting up a device for SNMP v3 for the first time, you will choose the security level for the usernames. If you're monitoring a device already configured for SNMP v3, you will need to know the security level configured for the usernames you are going to use to monitor. You then configure your network monitoring system, like Nagios XI, to match the security level configured on the device for the username. If the monitor device expects one security level for a username, but you are using a different one on your network monitoring solution, your monitoring will not work. No auth, no priv is the lowest security level in SNMP v3. Authentication uses only a username, no password is required, and the message is not encrypted, so it is effectively no different from SNMP v1 or 2C. The entire communication is sent in the clear, and any attacker with access to the packets can easily use the information to send malicious SNMP requests. Why would an organization use this security level? I can only think of one reason, and it's not a good one. Auth no priv is the middle security level in SNMP v3. Auth no priv uses both a username and an authentication password. Your message is authenticated, but not encrypted. Anyone who can see the network traffic can read your SNMP request and your username, and they can read what the device sends back to you. So, what good is auth no priv? Well, even though the message is not encrypted, the authentication password is not sent over the network. Instead, SNMP v3 uses the authentication password to create a cryptographic hash value for the message, which allows both sides of the communication to verify that they have the same password. An attacker would have to know the authentication password in order to successfully send malicious SNMP requests. Authentication in SNMP v3 allows for use of either the MD5 or the SHA1 hashing algorithms. SHA1 is stronger, while MD5 is faster. Keep in mind that the network monitoring system needs to use the same hashing algorithm to create the hash as the monitored device uses to verify the hash, so make sure you know which algorithm the monitored device expects. Why would you use auth no privs authentication without encryption? Well, encryption is computationally expensive. It uses CPU resources on both the monitored device and the network monitoring system. You might choose auth no priv if you have severe resource constraints and can't afford the CPU cycles for encryption. Still, some would say extra resources are much less expensive than either a data breach or destructive intrusion, so while you can use auth no priv, you definitely want to use auth priv if you can. Auth priv is the highest security level in SNMP v3. AuthPriv uses a username, authentication password, and privacy password. Your SNMP message is both authenticated and partially encrypted. 
In AuthPriv, the authentication works exactly the same as it does in AuthNoPriv, but keep in mind that only the SNMP request itself is encrypted with AuthPriv. The username and some other metadata remain unencrypted. The privacy password is used to encrypt and decrypt the messages. With AuthPriv, you have the choice of encryption methods, either DES or AES. AES encryption is both less computationally expensive and more secure than DES encryption, so choose wisely. Strong encryption of the message can significantly increase an attacker's burden if their goal is to send malicious SNMP packets. However, the easiest attack against encrypted data is to go after weak encryption passwords. If your encryption password is password, you shouldn't expect much security. This goes for your authentication password as well. If you're going to go to all the trouble of setting up SNMP v3 with AuthPriv, create strong passwords and don't use the same password for both privacy and authentication. That's all you need to know to use SNMP v3 for network monitoring. What did you learn today? Well, you learned that there are three security levels that form the basis for SNMP v3 monitoring. You learned that the security levels are configured per user on the device you're monitoring, and that your network monitoring system needs to match this security level in order to monitor successfully. Finally, hopefully, you have learned that using the highest security level along with strong passwords is absolutely the best way to go. Thanks for watching. Download Nagios XI from the link in the description below, and you'll be monitoring in no time.